all these dumb Mario games are always the same. Man, if only there was a different Mario game for once. I said, if only there was a different Mario- Ah! Super Mario Sunshine. Oh yeah. Forgot about that one. Super Mario Sunshine was released on August 26, 2002 for the GameCube, and was initially developed as a sequel to Super Mario 64, but soon became a way to show off what the GameCube could do. Sunshine was the first appearance of a lot of characters like Petey Piranha, Piantas, this guy, and most important, Bowser Jr. The game was loved by critics everywhere, helping the game sell over 6 million copies, paired with the fact that it's a Mario game which guaranteed the first 4 million. The weird thing is though, despite it being loved by critics and fans alike, I keep hearing that people are saying that they don't like it. At all. I'm not really sure why yet, but I guess I'll find out. Just gonna shake some of that water off. When you start up the game, you get your usual developed by Nintendo and whatnot, but then it doesn't just go straight to the menu. There's a cutscene. At this point, the average Mario player is slightly confused at these changes. And look! Actual voice acting! Ooh, look at that! This cutscene shows that Mario, the Princess, and Toadsworth, not Luigi, pff, why would he even be there? are going on vacation to an island resort called Isle Delfino, but it seems that there's a strange figure in the info video. After that, we get to the absolutely gorgeous and stunning title screen. Super Mario Sunshine! This is when you know you're gonna have a good time. When you start your file, another cutscene starts and our heroes, or a hero and two slightly important people, have landed rather abruptly. <gasps> the reason for this is that there's a lot of goop. Gross, yucky, colorful, wavy, weird, ewy, gross, icky, paint-like goop. It's moving! So Toadsworth saw like, oh Mario, you gotta go, go find something to do, there's all this goop everywhere. So now you get to control Mario, which is pretty smooth. The camera's kinda screwy, but it shouldn't really be too much of a problem yet. On the other side of the... airport? Mario finds a device that introduces itself as Flood. Power up complete. After a cutscene with some neat little easter eggs, Flood teaches you how to use them. And it's unskippable and very annoying if this is your... 16th time playing. So now you can play around with the water stuff for a while until you decide to man up and spray water all over that gelatinous blob chunk of unidentifiable goo liquid that will devour everything around it and kill all of us. Kids game! Uh, oh no, it's a piranha plant goo thing, oh no! Squirt in its mouth three times and it goes away. And by phrasing it like that, I've officially gotten an age restriction on this video. After that, you get a shiny thing. It's very shiny and it says shine when you grab it. Shiny. Once you get the shiny, there's yet another cutscene where Mario gets put in forking jail. There's no way this game's rated E. Court is now in session. Now Mario has been accused of putting graffiti all over the island and defacing some of Isle Delfino's national landmarks, and he's been sentenced to imprisonment on the island until he cleans it all up. Flood explains the importance of your job and the shine sprites, and now you get to play. Your first job is to get rid of all that ugly. And remember, we'll be watching you, pal. We'll know if you start slacking off. Oh, you will? Then how come I was able to jump on your heads a bunch, run around town for a bit, and then get a shine sprite all before I cleaned that up? <laughs> Moving on, clean it up, same crap as the airport, and then even more cutscene. Oh no, it's the shadowy guy from before, and he seems he looks an awful lot like Mario, and now he's kidnapping Peach. Pretty sure that's evil Mario. 
The best part about this is that she just stands there and takes it. Like seriously, wouldn't she do anything to protect herself? Uh, what, what, why is he running towards me? Chase him down, spray him down, get him down, and when he loses, he acts like a child. Chase him down again, and he opens up a portal to a different world. And this is where the game gets good. <laughs> Welcome to Bianco Hills! The first main world of Sunshine, full of color and originality everywhere you go. Bianco Hills serves as a tutorial world for Mario Sunshine as it shows you how the game works and it helps you get used to the formula. The first mission of Bianco shows you how levels in general are going to work. They show you what you're looking for, you run over to it, and then you do the thing. This one's very simple though because it's just another goop monster and a shine sprite. The second mission is an introduction to bosses with the PD Piranha boss fight and it's pretty cool. But the third mission... Ugh! The third mission is an introduction to one of the worst parts of the game, the secret levels. Secret missions have you travel to an out of the way area of the map, and then Shadow Mario shows up and he takes away Flood, now you're in a weird place that looks like a bunch of shock drawings got thrown in space. So there's a bunch of platforming parkour BS you gotta put up with, so you're like, oh, okay, I guess I can do that, but oops, you forgot, you don't have Flood anymore, so you're screwed! Yeah! Also, do you remember how earlier I said the camera shouldn't be a problem yet? This is yet. Right now, this is yet. These levels, definition of yet. You go, you go online, type in to find yet, you get the Mario Sunshine secret levels. You, you know what we're having for supper? We're having spaghetti and meatballs. Did I actually just do that joke? Now that's over, I go to another world, Rico Harbor. I don't like this one because to me, some levels were annoying, but bias aside, this one's all about boats. There's a blooper boss, a dumb racing level that no one likes, and a unique maze level that I personally really enjoy. It's called the Cage Shine Sprite, and it makes use of the gigantic construction site above Rico Harbor's water half. In it, you have to navigate all the way up to the top, but there's some tricky platforming, chucksters that might not be trustworthy, and cloud things that if you're not careful, could knock you off and you'd have to start all over again. But this way, if you goof up, it's only 60% your fault if you goof, instead of the usual 20 in this game. After Rico Harbor, there's another area called Gelato Beach, which is located at a beach. The first mission is an annoying secret level, which honestly I didn't have too much trouble with, but annoying nonetheless. <laughs> The second mission is called Mirror Madness. Madness. Tilt Slam Bam, which totally isn't the most Japanese style for something I've ever heard. And you have to use your ground pounding abilities to bounce the cataquacks off the mirrors so the big caterpillar gets off the giant statue. And then he gets off the statue in the next mission, but you have to fight him as a boss, and when you beat him, he turns into sand. <laughs> probably the worst way to go. Whoa! After Gelato Beach, there's a cutscene. Shadow Mario has kidnapped Peach and taken her to the nearby park, Pina Park, the next world in the game. But you don't get that by jumping through some paint blurb on a wall, though. You get shot out of a damn cannon! <laughs> which by doing so has likely given Mario some serious head injuries. Which is why you should always wear a seatbelt. After you chase Shadow Mario inside Pina Park into the little pool area, Shadow Mario uses the power of God to split apart the ocean and allow his people to pass through. Wait, hang on, that's not right. Shadow Mario opens up the pool and an enormous mechanical Bowser emerges from it. But the park director thinks it's all an act, so he provides you with a vehicle, uh, uh, sorry, a roller coaster, so you can be able to fire at it from different angles with rockets. Hit it four times and you're good. And now Shadow Mario reveals himself to be, spoiler alert, Bowser Jr. According to Bowser Jr., Peach is his mama, and Mario's the one who keeps kidnapping her. I came here to rescue her! And then he escorts her, not kidnaps her, don't worry, to Corona Mountain, which is the end goal for the game. To unlock Corona Mountain, you gotta complete every seventh mission in each world, which means I've gotta do a lot of work if I wanna save that princess. <coughs> Moving on, the second mission in Peanut Park is a goddamn secret level! The third mission is one of those red coin adventures. You look around, find eight red coins, and you get a shine sprite. Not really that much effort. The fourth mission in the park takes place outside the park, actually. 
sunflowers near the park are wilting because of some weird egg dino turtle monsters are on the ground. And when you squish them, they turn into more sunflowers. I don't see anything wrong with that logic. I ended up squishing them all in the same spot and made a giant thing of sunflowers. There's just so many sunflowers. All of these sunflowers! Oh my goodness, so many sunflowers! After you finish that mission, something goes down back at the plaza. Shadow and Mario's got an egg and you have to chase him down to get it. And after you get it, you gotta bring in a fruit. And when you do, it's Joshi! Joshi's in it! Joshi's competing! Yes, this is the first 3D Mario game with Yoshi in it, and it's implemented in just the right way. Yoshi can eat fruits, spray his juice, and flutter a little bit. And people say I'm talented. With Yoshi, you can now access Sirena Beach, home to Hotel Delfino. The map itself is designed to resemble a GameCube controller, and honestly, it's really cool. Hey, don't forget, you're playing our GameCube, this is our machine. Don't forget! The problem is, though, that in this mission, there's electric ring pop goo everywhere and it's engulfed in the entire hotel. You know, when I look around, there's not very many people outside. Oh my god. Did, did, did they evacuate the hotel before it went down? Oh my god! The goo's been caused by a giant light shadow of a manta ray, and it's coming back, so you have to take care of it. From what I've heard, this battle is supposedly a reference to the movie The Shining, but I've never seen it, so... After the manta storm is- GOD DAMN IT! Sirena Beach is my other favorite world in the game, because it's where the game's originality... ...shines. Sirena Beach is divided into three sections, the beach, the hotel, and the casino. The beach and casino do have levels like the Manta Storm or the King Boo one, but the hotel takes the cake by far because the third mission takes place inside the hotel, and it's my favorite mission in the whole game, Mysterious Hotel Delfino. And it's my favorite mission because it shows the game's excellence in level design. <gasps> so the level starts up and you go talk to the guy and he brings you in the hotel. You go in and you look around a bit and you see the Yoshi egg and there wants a pineapple and you think, oh okay, I guess I'll go get a pineapple. So you look around and there's a guy with fruit on the other side of the lobby, but he says he doesn't have pineapple anymore. So you go looking around the hotel for stuff. Eventually you see the shine spite in the room you can't get into, no matter what you try. On the same floor you find an open door and you go in and there's a secret entrance to air duct, but there's lots of ghosts. So since you can't do anything, you look around until you go in the bathroom. They see water on the side, so you try jumping up and it takes you into a pool room. In the pool room there's a spooky painting, and when you spray it there's a boo and you can jump through it. Then you're in a room with a spooky closet, and if you line up the tiles there's a boo and you can go through. Are you noticing a pattern yet? Then there's pink boos that when you spray them and they become platforms, which you can use to go up to the next floor. And then there's this weird place shelf that when you spray it, flips all you over to another room, Scooby Doo style. And then there's a guy who's missing a pineapple. Then you jump on his miscolored tile, and then you get pineapples, which you can take back to the egg to get a Yoshi. Then you go in the bathroom and jump up again, realize you went the long way, realize you can't exit doors with Yoshi, and then you have to abandon Yoshi and go get another pineapple and wait for him to turn back into an egg. And then you go with Yoshi up to the air ducts, <laughs> eat all the ghosts, find the tile that when you ground pound on it brings you to the room with the shine sprite. <coughs> Give me that water bottle. <coughs> It's a very clever level, a clevel if you will, and it shows that you don't need any of that platforming bullcrap to make a good level. It's different from other Mario games and it tries something new for once. I just don't see what all the hate was for- Oh wait, now I remember. Different! Sunshine was a love it or hate it game because it dared to be different. The developers were going for something new and fresh, and even if it sucked at some point, it was still something different than the usual status quo. Flood was an amazing addition that shook up the way the platforming worked, and when it was taken away, it shook you up again because you were already used to it. The game even introduced us to a bright new world full of brand new characters and gave the GameCube a chance. I look how many copies it sold, look how many copies these are! That's a lot of, that's a lot of, like, discs. With levels like the Cage Shine Sprite, the Mysterious Hotel Delfino, and a few other levels, this game was able to push the limits of originality and creativity. So with all these amazing and unique ideas, I bet the final boss will be the best there ever has been in a Mario game. You know what, screw it, the best there ever has been in any game, I bet. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! Oh. He's, take he's taking a bath. Okay. 
hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you like my content, be sure to drop a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to see more videos now, though, you can check out some of my other videos here. If you want to stay updated on what I'm doing, follow my Twitter. And if you want to see more amazing gaming content like this, then head over to limitedlives.com. There's a bunch of great content creators there waiting to be discovered, and all you have to do is click the link in the description. See you next time. You didn't think I'd forget, did you?